Dear viewers, in today's lesson, we will be looking at the novella, The Fox, written by D. H. Lawrence. Today, we will be summarizing the lesson and going into detail, looking at the various aspects in the story and we will also be looking at the way the psychological relationships are dealt with by the author. The Fox is a novella written by D. H. Lawrence. It deals with the life of two women, Nellie March and Jill Banford, who struggle to maintain a marginal livelihood at the Bailey farm without the help of any male laborers. The story revolves round a fox who rages through the poultry and in spite of many efforts from the women, especially the more masculine Nelly, he always seems to escape. The turning point of this psychologically complex story is the entry of Henry Grenfell. As is the characteristic of D. H. Lawrence's works, the fox also deals with the relationships of three protagonists in a triangle of love and hatred. Before we go into the story, let's have a look at the life of our author D. H. Lawrence. He was an English novelist, poet, playwright, essayist, literary critic and painter. He is now widely recognized as a visionary thinker and an important representative of modernism in English literature. He was born on 11th September 1885 at Eastwood, Nottinghamshire. His father was a coal miner and his mother was from a normal middle class family. The emotional friction between the parents and his close relationship with his mother left deep impressions on his life and writings. He was subject to diseases including lung infections from a young age which dogs him throughout his life until his death from tuberculosis at the age of 44. All this does have an impact on his writing. After schooling at the Nottingham High School in 1901, he worked for a brief period as a junior clerk in a surgical appliance factory for one year. Until 1906, he worked as a teacher at Eastwood and Ilkeston and saved money for his education at the University College, Nottingham. After his matriculation, he joined the Davidson Road School in Croydon. This move, marking his emotional and financial independence, is considered as a prelude to his literary career. In 1909, he started publishing poetry. However, it was in 1911 that his first novel, The White Peacock, was published after some censoring. By 1912, he gave up teaching following an illness only to continue with his literary career. Early in the same year, he met Frieda Weekly, daughter of a German baron and the wife of a professor at Nottingham. They went to Germany together and were married in 1914 after her divorce. After the marriage, the Lawrences moved throughout Europe. During World War I, they first lived in London and then moved to Cornwall, developing deep friendship with many of the leading writers of that time, such as Aldous Huxley, Bertrand Russell, Lady Othelin Morrill, Catherine Mansfield, John Middleton Murray, and Richard Aldington. The Rainbow, his novel, published in 1915, was banned by the authorities on grounds of obscenity. In addition to this, they were accused of spying by the Germans and were expelled from Cornwall in 1917. In 1919, they left for Italy and between 1922 and 1926, he and Frida lived intermittently in Ceylon, Australia, New Mexico and Mexico, which formed the settings of many of his novels and short stories. In 1925, after a severe illness in Mexico, it was discovered that Lawrence was suffering from tuberculosis. He and Frida returned to Europe, but his health continued to decline. He finally died at Venice in France on 2nd March 1930. Let's now have a look at his works. D. H. Lawrence's collected works is a reflection upon the dehumanizing effects of modernity and industrialization. 
He confronts issues relating to emotional health and vitality, spontaneity and instinct. Lawrence's opinion earned him many enemies and he endured official persecution, censorship and misrepresentation of his creative work throughout the second half of his life, much of which he spent in a voluntary exile which he called his savage pilgrimage. Lawrence is perhaps best known for his novels, Sons and Lovers, The Rainbow, Women in Love and Lady Chatterley's Lover. These novels explore the possibilities for life and living within an industrial setting. He is concerned with the nature of relationships. In his later years, Lawrence developed the potentialities of the short novel form and his short stories are generally considered to be among the best in the genre. Lawrence's best known short stories include The Captain's Doll, The Fox, The Ladybird, Order of Chrysanthemums, The Princess, The Rocking Horse Winner, Saint Moore, The Virgin and the Gypsy, and The Woman Who Rode Away. Among his most praised collection is The Prussian Officer and Other Stories, published in 1914. His collection, The Woman Who Rode Away and Other Stories, published in 1928, develops his themes of leadership that he also explored in novels such as Kangaroo, The Plumed Serpent and Fanny and Annie. Although best known for his novels and short stories, Lawrence wrote almost 800 poems, most of them relatively short. His first poems were written in 1904 and two of his poems, Dreams Old and Dreams Nascent, were among his earliest published works in the English Review. His early works clearly place him in the school of Georgian poets, a group not only named after their reigning monarch, but also to the romantic poets of the previous Georgian period, whose work they were trying to emulate. What typified Lawrence's poem of the time were well-worn poetic tropes and deliberately archaic language. Many of these poems displayed what John Ruskin referred to as the pathetic fallacy, the tendency to ascribe human emotions to animals and even inanimate objects, which is of importance to the work that we are dealing with today. Just as the First World War dramatically changed the work of many of the poets who saw service in the trenches, Lawrence's own work saw a dramatic change during his years in Cornwall. During this time, he wrote free verse influenced by Walt Whitman. Although his literary career spanned only two decades and even though he was dogged by diseases throughout his life, his body of work is considerable. Now let us have a look at the story The Fox. The story first appeared in The Dial in 1922 and was published as a novella in 1923. As I told you already, it tells the tale of two women, Ellen, Nellie March and Jill Banford, who lives in a secluded farm near Berkshire. There is no one else there and it is free of the presence of any men. Their nature complements each other. Banford is a bit chatty and nervous at times and March is always quiet but strong. They have found solace in each other's company and were living quite well with whatever they were getting from the farm except for the slight disturbances caused by the fox. However, with the arrival of the intruder, Henry Grenfell, the fox is pushed into the background. He is a soldier on leave and he returns to the farm which his grandfather formerly owned. He is a boy of 20. He reminds Banford of a brotherly figure with his warm and happy temperament with whom she can talk and discuss things. But March finds him differently and it becomes hard for her to control her hidden desire. Banford allows him to stay with them for some days till he finds some other place in some other town. But within days only, March loses her heart to him in spite of all her inner strength and wisdom and Banford had to deal with the unwanted 
and adverse news of their decision to get engaged and married. March being her only company and strength, Banford finds it hard to let them go, so tries in every way possible to poison March's mind to stop her and behaves badly and rudely and in every way possible to make the boy leave. And Henry, on the other hand, works on making March leave with him. The crux of the story is the decision of March whether to stay with Banford and have a safe and comfortable but dull life or succumb to the passions of boy and have unpredictable and harsh but desirous life. In the end, all the puzzles are solved when Henry kills off Jill Banford and in the end, we find the couple Henry and March imagining the life they look forward to in Canada. The climax indeed is very predictable and sensational but a bit disheartening. Parallel to it runs the story of the fox that comes from the jungle to hunt the farm fowls, context of which is very well used by the writer to engage his characters' lives and to raise readers' excitement in the story. It brings the aspect of horror and mystery to the story. It is also important as by killing the fox, Henry confirms his position among the girls at the farm. Let's now have a look at the characterization of the novella. When it comes to the work of D. H. Lawrence, the mobility of his characters is a central factor. It helped one to understand his rich, intricate and varied tales. His characters were based on the idea that man is a product of his environment. He lays emphasis on the complexity of human personality. That is the reason why one finds his characters not static but independent. They keep evolving as the plot of the story develops. His characters strive to express themselves and often a conflict takes place and their inner passions drive them to action and this provided Lawrence reality in multiple levels. This is very clear through the characters in the story The Fox. There are mainly three characters, Ellen, Nellie March, Jill Banford and Henry Grenfell. The fox that intrudes into their calm life can also be considered as an important character. Nellie March is the central character of the story. She is the most important and the interesting character in the story. She remains like the mystery to the very end both to the reader as well as to the other characters of the story. One feels a strange kind of likeness as well as sympathy for her as she is strong yet quiet. Jill Banford with her open and blunt nature at first seems to be a very simple and innocent girl. But as the story reaches the part where Henry first tells her about his and Nellie's plans of marriage, she starts to behave uncharacteristically. She takes a complete U-turn and becomes very mean and spiteful. This could be her reaction to the drastic change of events. Henry, the unwelcomed intruder, is the most vital part of the story. He is a young boy who is attractive but cunning. He comes in and changes the lives of the main characters. The fox is also important as a character as it forms a complementary pair with Henry. In a way, it represents the basic instincts that govern even the humans. While reading Lawrence's short tales, one finds his characters fragmentary. The chaos of the reality of interpersonal relationships has been dramatized throughout, both in content and their behavior. In a way, Lawrence's skill at characterization reaches the center of man and his inner self. Thus, we can feel the genius of D.H. Lawrence and his skill and ease at character development even within the limited form of a novella.
Let us have a look at the theme and setting of the story The Fox. The Fox as we have seen has a lot of dominating themes. The themes of power, domination, weakness, submission and assertion radiate out from the characters and through their relationships. The triangle of the complex relationships also point to another underlying yet poignant theme, the conflict and contrast between masculinity and femininity. The themes of love as opposed to friendship, the life in the farms of the 1910s England, the changes in the Victorian outlook to the position of women in society and life in the times of World War I all form part of the story The Fox. The setting of the story is the period of World War I and the action is set in the midlands of England, probably near Berkshire. The novella details a unique lifestyle of two odd bored English women at the turn of the century. Right from the names of the characters, Lawrence accentuates their determined and unusual manfulness as compared with the more feminine and submissive women of that time. It is interesting to note that D. H. Lawrence chooses to label them by their surnames only, March and Banford. In the case of March, as the name indicates, she aspires to be independent, strong and capable of standing on her own two feet in a man's world. This was not an easy task in Victorian mind in England at that time and the girls were having a difficult time of it. Trying to run a poultry farm and support themselves with little experience was bound to be a more challenging task than they had anticipated. Banford, on the other hand, was the more feminine of the two ladies, although not consequently the more attractive. With a petite frame, a delicate constitution, little physical strength or stamina, and an intense bespectacled face, Lawrence leaves readers in no doubt as to her slim chances of marriage. Into this flawed agricultural lifestyle and quirky but contented relationship slides young wily Henry in need of a home. The playing out of the relationships in threesome is highlighted by the classic personification of a fox among the chickens and Henry sure does stir things up. The themes of power, domination, weakness, submission and assertion are worked out through these characters on multiple levels. The strong character of March becomes weak with the arrival of Henry. The masculine presence suddenly shifts the whole equation in the farm. The cunningness of Henry competes with the innocence of Banford here. We also find the loyalty of March shifting. Another important aspect in this story is the use of symbolism and also the significance of the title. In the story The Fox, Symbolism is very expertly used by Lawrence. His works are known for the symbols he used and symbolism is strong, pervasive and communicates itself very strongly through this particular story. Lawrence had the idea of a fox-like protagonist right from the outset. Henry is even described as looking like the creature as well as displaying wily and cunning character traits. Sly and observant, he watches out for signs of weakness in his female victims, two close girlfriends sharing a farm, waiting for the right moment to strike and take one. The girls, on the other hand, seem as chickens in a hen house, dizzy and vacant and fussing over trivia all the time. Henry, the opportunistic fox, builds upon her confusion and alienation by creeping up closer still to March. Like the keen-nosed intuition of the fox, he senses Banford's fear and manipulates her still, for she is the hurdle between himself and his marriage to March and ultimately the attainment of the farm. 
Like a cold, calculating fox stalking a chicken, he picks his moment and strikes when she leaves the coop. The girl's strange but gossy relationship of empathy and contented companionship is rocked by the watchful Henry. Their boring but happy existence about to be chewed apart by his anger at a foiled plot to split them up. The dynamic in the hen coop is changed drastically by the interference of the fox. Be it the wild fox that feeds on the chicken in the farm or Henry who feasts on the breaking apart of the friendship of the girls. Henry's boyish round head and long sweaty hair, his becoming voice and watchful eyes suggest all the strategies of a handsome but menacing fox stalking its clucking prey. Banford's remonstrations and moody fussing at his attentions to her special friend seem more and more like frenzied squawking as the novella continues. The similarity is completed to perfection when Henry murders Banford. It is described thus in the novella. No one saw her flung outwards and laid, a little twitching heap at the foot of the fence. No one except the boy, and he watched with intense bright eyes as he would watch a wild goose he had shot. With one sentence, Lawrence completes the characterization of Banford as a bird. Was it winged or dead? Dead. Thus, it can be concluded that Henry and the fox are compared, transposed and superimposed several times throughout the novella. Though often classed as a realist, Lawrence's use of his characters can be better understood with reference to his philosophy. His depiction of sexual activity, though shocking at the time, has its roots in this highly personal way of thinking and being. It is worth noting that Lawrence was very interested in human touch and behavior and that his interest in physical intimacy has its roots in a desire to restore our emphasis on the body and rebalance it with what he perceived to be Western civilization's slow process of overemphasis on the mind. In working out his philosophy, his works tend to be very complex as far as the relationship between the characters are concerned and also in the way he manipulates the environment around them to bring out their own instincts. In this way, it can be said that the fox as a story is also a representation of how the basic raw human instincts are brought out in a human being. The fox is used in the novel as a symbol of male energy and comes to dominate Nellie's dreams in a way that both fills her with revulsion but also attracts her. Nellie tries to shoot him but the eyes of the fox transfix her and she is unable to shoot. This aspect is later transposed onto Henry. As is characteristic of D. H. Lawrence's work, this story also focuses on the relationship of three characters and the kind of triangle of love and hatred that they form together. By portraying the trio in testing circumstances, what Lawrence achieves is psychological realism. The two female characters, Nellie March and Jill Banford, live and work together on Bailey Farm, struggling to make ends meet. Henry Grenfell, who symbolizes the masculine energy of the fox, characterized by boyish charm and energy, starts off the complexities in the relationship of the girls. Lawrence's attention is focused upon the inner life of an individual. The insight within the characters give the readers understanding of their inner beings and the characters and readers concept merges into universal psyche. Though there are only three characters, they are being brought out to life very beautifully with the flow of the story. Human observation and character portrayal are deep and meaningful in this novella. 
For example, March is very fully described. Her breeches, the way she sits, her wisp of hair, her large brown eyes. And so is Branford. Her strands of grey hair, her mousy behaviour and lack of physical agility in climbing styles or heavy farm work. Henry is described minutely right down to his foxy coloured downy hair as the fox itself. Viewers, we have looked at the novella The Fox. Hope you have enjoyed it. See you in the next lesson. Thank you.